Hey guys, this is Dr. Amit Sadwani, your prosthodontist from Mumbai. Here I am with the video number two for the removable prosthodontic series. This time we speak on cast partial dentures. One of the most crucial aspects of any cast partial denture design is the major connector selection. When it comes to maxillary arch, the most commonly used major connector is the anterior posterior palatal strap. We'll discuss a bit about this particular major connector design in today's video. Let us look at one of the cases in which the various aspects of the design can be explained. Now this particular case has six anterior teeth present which are firm and we are going to replace them with a definitive fixed partial denture. In this case a PFM restoration and the posteriors are replaced with the cast partial denture. If you carefully see the design it is more or less trapezoidal in nature. The major connector has got two straps the anterior strap and the posterior strap. The characteristic feature of these straps is that the thickness or the width needs to be somewhere about a minimum of 8 millimeters. These two straps, the anterior one and the posterior, are connected through two longitudinal straps. Now these two longitudinal straps actually impart a rigid design to this type of major connector. If you carefully see, the anterior strap needs to be a minimum of 6 millimeter away from the gingival margin of the anteriors. Also, the anterior strap which is very close to the rugae needs to follow a particular principle. It should be in between the two rugae that is within the valley of the rugae. Also the posterior strap needs to be away from the junction of the hard and the soft tissue palate. So all in all if you see the anterior posterior palatal strap is limited to the hard palate. Moving ahead with the geometry which needs to be followed in the AP strap. Now that if you see the major connector is nearly confluent to the minor connector, it needs to cross the gingival margin abruptly that is at 90 degree and the margin or the lateral border of the major connector needs to be absolutely parallel to the gingival line of the remaining abutment teeth. As we can see, all these features actually make this particular major connector more universal in nature. It is indicated in most of the partially edentulous scenarios. There are going to be certain scenarios where you won't be able to use the AP strap. We'll come to that later. Now, why is this design so rigid? As you can see, it follows the two planes of the heart palate. One of the straps is in the anterior plane and the posterior strap on the posterior plane. This particular design gives it something called as the L-beam effect or it follows the L-beam principle which increases the resistance to flexure of this particular major connector. Now that's the reason why this major connector is absolutely rigid. Unlike the other major connector designs for maxillary arch like the palatal strap which is typically used in a class 3 modification 1 scenario is nothing but a single strap of metal which passes or traverses the hard palate nearly in the middle third. Uh, anterior posterior palatal strap is a little more rigid. Now this particular design may be subject to flexure and may deform over a period of time. Another design which comes to my mind is the open horseshoe design. Open horseshoe design is not very frequently used nowadays for the very reason that the anterior strap actually passes on to the uh, cingulum of the anterior teeth uh, but it is devoid of the posterior strap like in case of an AP strap. So what it actually does is it subjects the framework to rotational forces in the horizontal plane that is flexion and deformation 
in this particular major connector is easily seen. What about the extended AP strap? Yes, that is how AP strap is modified in lieu of the open horseshoe design. If you see the anterior strap, just like an open horseshoe, traverses along the cingulae of the anterior teeth. But in this case, we also have a posterior strap which imparts the rigidity into the design. This is the final visual of the cast partial denture. Extended AP strap also has an advantage in those cases whereby anterior teeth need to be replaced. So we can easily add the denture teeth onto the framework. If you carefully see one of the scenario where AP strap cannot be used or is contraindicated is in those cases where there are few anterior teeth remaining. Now if those anterior teeth are periodontally compromised and the patient desires to preserve those teeth, in such scenario a complete palatal coverage can be used. Now if you carefully see it actually covers the complete hard palate. In this case you can leave some space in the posterior aspect, convert it into a mesh and reline it with acrylic so that the PPS can be recorded in this particular denture. So in certain scenarios this design is definitely better than the AP strap design and that's why AP strap design should not be used and abused always. Moving ahead, there are certain cases where you like to tweak the designs. That's what I like to do in certain cases. So I can use a single strap instead of two, even if it is a class one distal extension scenario. In such cases, uh, whereby the anteriors are replaced through some PFM restoration, I can provide a firm support for the rests of the cast partial denture. Also, if I make my strap design in such a way that it passes through the most dependable aspect of your little vault, in such cases I can just use a single strap instead of two. Now, to conclude, let us have a look at the steps which are very crucial in maxillary major connector design. Be it any major connector you choose, you need to first visualize the cast. Moving ahead, you mark the denture base region onto the cast. Then you mark those areas which are going to act as relief like the anterior areas in which the major connector design should not be ideally incorporated or the median palatal area or the PPS region where your metal casting should not lie upon. And then you move ahead and design your major connector excluding those areas which were marked earlier as a relief. I hope you are uh, well versed with the anterior posterior palatal strap design and some design considerations which I could explain in parallel to the AP strap design. This is me Dr. Amit Sadwani, MDS Prosthodontics and I have the channel on YouTube with the same name. You can also connect me on my email address or my phone number. As always, like others, I would want to appeal to you all to like, share and subscribe my channel on YouTube. Thank you very much.